Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of this series where we build a slam system from scratch in Python. Today we're gonna build the LiDAR sensor as the one shown in the screen, a sensor that scans its surroundings and then returns the data to be illustrated in the form of 2D points, which allow us to construct this two-dimensional map of the environment. But before we begin, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and leave a like. It's absolutely free and you can always unsubscribe. So without any further ado, let's begin. The LiDAR acronym stands for Light Detection and Ranging. It's basically a measurement device that emits a laser beam in the environment and measures the time it takes for the laser beam to return, which allows the calculation of the distance between the sensor and the object from which the laser has reflected. In addition to this, some LiDAR sensors are mounted on a rotating disk, allowing them to calculate angles, and thus can be used to accurately locate the point of reflection. And uh, since the point of reflection in our case means an obstacle, we can accurately create a map of our surroundings and even locate ourselves in that map. There is a variety of LiDAR sensors in the market ranging from expensive 3D long-range devices that are mounted on top of airplanes to simple low-cost 2D sensors that can be bought for a few dollars on Amazon. And so in this video, and for the sake of simplicity and convenience, we're gonna simulate a 2D LiDAR sensor and use it to create a point cloud map as seen in the intro. We begin by creating a new folder in our PyCharm project folder. I'm gonna name it Slam YouTube and uh, inside I will create three files. The first one is for sensors, the second is for the virtual environment, and the third is gonna be the main script inside which we will import all of the classes that we make. The next step is to create a floor plan to represent our real environment seen in 2D. You can find the many floor plans in Google. The important thing is it have to have a white background, so we are going to copy this and paste it in MS Paint to clean it a little bit. And uh, first we have to go to the properties, then set the length and the width of the MS Paint canvas to 1200 by 600 pixels, as we can see in here. And we just paste the picture we copied from Google and clean it using the eraser tool available in the toolbar. When we finish, we save the picture in the folder we created, Slam YouTube, or you can save it elsewhere and just copy and paste to that folder. In PyCharm, you can open the picture like this. Alright, it's all good. Don't worry, I'll put a link in the description below to this floor plan and also other designs you may like. We all set and ready now to start coding our scripts. We begin by constructing the virtual environment, we import the math module along with Pygame, and if you don't have Pygame already, you can just type pip install Pygame in the command window below. It's a very useful library in simulations, so you gotta have it. Next, we create a class for building the environment. We define the init method specifying the map dimensions as arguments, we first initialize the Pygame instance and declare a list to store our point cloud map, since it's just a group of 2D points in a 2D space. We upload our map file called map1.png by calling map image load and store it in this variable external map. We then split the dimensions of the canvas or the map to width and height and of course name the window using these two lines. Also specifying the width and height to the actual window is done like this. 
Pygame Display Set Mode and that will return our main map. Of course this main map will be empty, so we will draw the external map on top of it. We just overlay it using the function blit, just like this. And finally I'm gonna declare the RGB values of some commonly used colors. We will leave this file like this for now. Before we create the main script, we have to create a configuration file for it, so we can run it easily from the toolbar. Now in the main script, we import the environment and the sensor files from the slam YouTube file folder and we also import the Pygame and the math modules for they will be useful. Next, it's time to actually build the virtual environment by calling the build environment class by passing these dimensions to it as arguments. This boolean variable running is found in every Pygame script and it will be useful when we want to close the Pygame window. So in this while loop, we check for events and if an event type is pygame quit, which is related to the red exit button, then we set run into false, and the loop will be terminated. Outside of this for loop, the pygame display update method will be called, in order to update any changes we might do to the map. Now if you run the main script, you will see this external map drawn on top of the original empty main map, just like we wanted. The next step is creating the actual sensor. In addition to Pygame and the math library, we import NumPy as well and we create a class named Laser Sensor. In the init method, we set three arguments for now, the range of the sensor, the map and the uncertainty attached to the sensor measurements. Because as you know, nothing is perfect and even the most accurate sensors have a certain amount of noise attached to its output data. And so, we need to include this fact in our LiDAR sensor. The speed variable you see here is for later, in case we wanted to set a fixed speed for the sensor rotations. Sigma is the sensor measurement noise, and since the output data is represented by a distance and an angle, we will create this NumPy array using the uncertainty argument components. The initial position of the robot or sensor is going to be 0, 0, at the top right corner of the screen. We also get the window dimensions using this method. And finally we declare a list to store our point cloud. At this point we will need a way to measure distances between points in the 2D plane. And so, the Euclidean distance equation we all know and love comes to rescue. We need also a way to actually add noise to our sensor. So we will define this function that takes the measurement data and the user defined uncertainty as arguments. The way I decide to proceed in order to create noise is just by taking a random value in the vicinity of the actual measurement we have. For example, if the sensor output was 5 meters, we sample a random value from a Gaussian distribution where 5 meters is the mean and the variance is the uncertainty value we provide. So we arrange our data in a NumPy array and use sigma to create this covariance matrix, which is equal to zero except for the diagonal since the noise of the distance and the angle measurements are not correlated. And that means that they don't affect each other. All we have to do after this is to pass the mean array and the covariance in this multivariate normal method in order to actually get our noisy values. We make sure we don't get negative values using the max function and we return our measurements as an array. The next thing we will do is to actually sense nearby obstacles and the simple way to achieve this is by sampling. From a position of our robot we will extend the straight line segment of length equals to the sensor range. And along this line segment, we will take a number of samples from the environment. If the color of this sample is black, then this means an obstacle was reached, and there is no need for us to sample the rest of the line segment. 
If no obstacles was found, however, we consider this direction within the sensor range to be obstacle free. We repeat this operation while increasing the angle of the line segment until a rotation of 360 degrees is achieved. This will allow us to represent each point with a tuple containing its distance from the robot and an angle in which it was found. Coding this is straightforward. After declaring a list to store data and extracting X and Y coordinates of the robot or the sensor for now, we make a for loop that iterates through a list made of angles between 0 and 2 pi. This list is made using lean space that allow us to even specify how many values we want in this list, giving us the freedom to decide the resolution of the resulting map. In each iteration, we will calculate the coordinates of this point that represents the end of the line segment, using basic geometry since we already have an angle and a range. Next step is sampling, so we will create another loop that loops for 100 iterations, and in each time we will calculate the coordinates of a point in the line segment using this simple interpolation formula. Now, if the calculated point is within the window, we will extract the color of that exact point from the map using this pygame method. And if the color is black, then we calculate the distance of that point from the robot and we add uncertainty to the returned array called output. And also append the position of the robot to it and append the output list to the data. It is important to break the interpolation loop when we find an obstacle because there is no point in continuing our interpolation along this line. And this will simulate the nature of the laser beam that is reflected from the first obstacle it encounters. When the sensor completes a full turn, we return the data to be drawn in the map. Drawing the sensor data is the responsibility of the build environment class in the env file. In order to draw the data as a part of a map, you gotta build the point cloud map in the first place, which is as we said will be represented by a list of 2D coordinates. So it makes sense to create this helper method that converts the sensor row angle distance data to Cartesian coordinates using simple geometry notions and return them to be used by another method called data storage, like so. This method will take the raw data and use the add tuples to convert them into Cartesian coordinates and finally store that point in the point cloud list after checking for duplicates. The last method we're gonna define in this class is show sensor data, which will be straightforward. We will draw our data on this new map which will be at first initialized to the main map and in this for loop every point in the list will be drawn by setting the corresponding pixel to the color red. You can also draw a circle instead of just setting pixel colors but I think this way is much closer to real life projects. All we have left to do now is to use all of these methods and classes we defined in the main script file and so we will delete the few lines we wrote earlier and start over. Import classes, build the environment, and then save a copy of the main map that have the floor plan as the original map, and then create a laser sensor instance providing the range, the original map, and the uncertainty values. After this, we will fill the main map with black and save this black field map as our info map, that will be the one we draw the point cloud in. We set running to true and create the while loop as we did previously. A new variable this time is sensor on flag. The sensor on is set to true only if the mouse cursor is inside the window. This will prevent negative values from being treated. If the sensor on then we get the mouse position by calling pygame get pause, and then assign this position to the sensor position. Next, we run the LiDAR sensor for one turn, and we store and show its data. Drawing the data will be as we said on the info map, so we have to draw this map on the main map before updating and showing the window in each iteration. 
The results are shown in the screen. The LiDAR system attached to the mouse cursor for now, but in the end of this series you will be mounting this sensor on a differential drive robot, making it a fully autonomous vehicle. This is it for this video. In the next video we will work on feature extraction and landmarks in order to achieve localization of this robot using the LiDAR sensor data that we stored. If you're still watching to this part of this video, I think I earned myself a subscription. And as always, I'll see you in another video with another idea.